everyone. Let's learn lofty mountains together on page 26. So, first of all, the first practice step is find and circle the four octaves. Mm, that's really, really interesting. So remember an octave is eight keys apart. So if you see a G here, you're gonna see a G up here. Another octave of G would be this, another octave of G with this, would be this, and then another octave of G would be this. Same thing with the C's and all the D's. Let's play some D octaves going down. What fun. Go ahead and do that when you're practicing. So the very first octave that I see is in measure two, this G to this G. So go ahead and circle that in your score. Where do you see another octave? I hope that you are going to tell me measure four. This E in the left hand and this E in the right hand is an octave. Where do you see another one? Oh my goodness, the patterns are very similar between the first and second lines, right? So what about measure six? This G to this G. And where do you see the fourth octave in this piece? Hmm. I hope you're thinking and looking at the very last measure. This C to this C. So let's take a look at the left hand first. The thumb, the one finger, is going to play the G. And you'll notice there are two repeated Gs in measures one and two, and measure three, there are four notes that are going down, right, by step. So let's play those four notes. Two, three, four. And then, what is the next note? Are you going up? Or down from that D. You're going to go up a step, right, to this E. Now, take a look at the same pattern that's in measure seven. We have the exact same pattern, but in the very last measure, instead of going up to the E, where are you going to go now? Down a step to the C. Absolutely. So for the right hand, you'll notice that the very first note is an F, and you play it with your third finger. Why don't you go ahead and play the F to the D like this together? Oh, how nice that skip is. And then the very next skip in the second measure is G and E. You can go ahead and use fingers four and two. And then I've asked you to go ahead and play the very next note, which is the last note in the first line, the E. Go ahead and shift your hand so that your third finger is playing it. Then in measure five, F and D, go ahead and block that, that skip. You're gonna use fingers four and two. And the very next measure, you're gonna use a five finger on G and a third finger on E. Isn't that wonderful for that third interval? And the very last note of the entire piece is